Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be covering um, some probability questions that you guys sent in. So thank you so much for um, the recent milestone we reached. So we're closing in on 2.9 thousand subscribers, um, which is quite crazy. I can't even believe it. Um, but today we're just going to be covering some of these questions that you guys sent in and I thought they might be helpful. Um, and I know that a lot of people have been requesting to um, for a full mock, um, for another full mock. I'm not sure when I'll be able to do one as such, but I'll do my best to try and get it out um, within the next couple of days if possible. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at this question. Okay. So Assuming this driver makes an equal number of shots in home and away games, is a chance of scoring on a shot at an away game less than 20%, okay? So they make equal number of shots in home and away games. So I guess the first thing is making a shot, okay? So making a shot. That's 50% here and 50% here. So this is home, this is away. So it, And then the next one is going to be scoring a goal. Okay, and it says scores on one quarter of the football team star striker scores on one quarter of the shot she makes. So she scores um, so S for scoring and S for not scoring. So scores on 0.25, doesn't score on 0.75. At away games, it's one third and then two thirds over here. So is her chance of scoring a shot at an away game? So this one here, which is one third times a half, which is... 0.5, which is 1 6. So, is it less than 20%? Well, this is one of the things that I mentioned in one of my earlier videos. So, not actually in, in probability, but probably in QR about learning, you know, all the fractions from 1 over 1 to 1 over 10. 0.16, uh, sorry, a sixth is 0 0.166. So, this is less than 20%. So, I would say yes. So, you rule out C and D. Out of this, uh, B is the answer that makes sense, right? That's the one um, that closest aligns with what we are looking for. Okay, so let's go on to the next question then. Okay, sorry, there's a slight error with the question there. But if the score is currently 2-1 to a manual, is the probability that he will win overall 0.6? So we've done a question like this before um, on when one of my earlier DM probability videos. So um, if you haven't checked that out already, I would advise you to do so. But um, I'm just going to use the logic based off on that question. So I'm not going to explain it in too much detail, but I did explain it before in another video. So if you'd like to go back and have a look at that, it's in my decision-making probability playlist. So if the score is currently 2-1 to a manual, is the probability that he will win overall 0.6? Well, the probability for a manual to win overall, um, basically the fastest way to calculate this is probably to do one minus Ricardo winning. And the only way for Ricardo to win is if he wins the next two games because it's the first to three. So that means, and so the probability of Ricardo winning a game is 0.4 because him not winning a game is 0.6. So 0.4 times 0.4 is 0.16. So um, therefore, is the probability he will win overall 0.6? Well, the probability of Emmanuel winning is going to be 0.84 because it's 1 minus 0.16. So it's not going to be 0.6. And out of these, each player has a 40% chance of winning each game, so they have an equal chance of winning overall. That's wrong. So C has to be the answer. Yeah, Emmanuel needs to only win one more game. Okay, Because the idea here in this scenario is that these are the scenarios that can happen. So Emmanuel could just win the next game. Ricardo could win the next game and then Emmanuel could win or Ricardo could win both. So instead of calculating these individual probabilities and adding them together, I thought it would be faster to just calculate Ricardo's and do one minus that. Okay. Um, so yeah, just something to once again have a little bit of a think about. So let's go on to the last question. So this question is an interesting one. So a patient who is admitted on a weekday has less than a one in six chance of being admitted to an inpatient ward. Okay. Um, so and it asks us about. So if we read it, it says 20% of all patients in the ED are Im admitted to an inpatient ward in the hospital. Patients in the emergency department on Saturdays or Sundays have a 30 or 50% chance of being admitted respectively. So the point is, you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And this is 0.3, this is 0.5. But overall, the average probability that you have is 20%, right? Which means that all of these values added up together must add, and when you combine it with a 0.3 plus a 0.5, you divide it by 7, it must add up to uh, 0.2. So you basically have to find the averages. So what you're looking for is it's 0.2 times 7, which is 1.4. And then you have to subtract the 0.3, subtract the 0.5, which will give us... 0.8 so it's 0.6 so there's a 0.6 probability therefore of being admitted from monday to friday but that's across five days so the average admission on a weekday is just going to be 0.6 divided by five which is 0.12 so a person who's admitted on a weekday has less than a 1 6 chance of being admitted once again 1 6 is 0.1666 so i'd say this is true 
And out of these possibilities, rate during the week should be half that of the weekend. It's not about being half that of the weekend, that's wrong. The average admission rate on weekdays is 12%. Yes, this is going to be the answer. Okay, so you can see it's quite, you know, there's a logical way to follow through with these things, but it's just about hopefully being able to see it. And once again, remember what I said, there's only a finite number of possibilities, really, of probability questions that come up. So it's just about making sure that you're really, really happy with all of the basics. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, so yeah, sorry, I thought the last one was the last question, but we've got one more here. So Stoyan estimates the number of days each non-leap year on which he neither receives nor sends out deliveries for his pottery business is more than 50. Is he correct? So over the course of the year, he receives deliveries of materials once every five days at regular intervals. So one fifth of the days. He sends out deliveries every day of the week, except Sundays and Wednesdays. Okay, so that means he sends out deliveries five out of seven days. OK, and he receives deliveries once every five, sends out deliveries every day except Sundays and Wednesdays. OK, so it's the number of days each normal leap year in which he receives nor sends out deliveries is more than 50. OK, so neither receives nor sends out. So, ni so not receiving is going to be the opposite of that, which is four fifths and not sending out is two sevenths. So if he's not doing either of these, remember what we said about probability. The probability of individual events occurring is the probability of each one multiplied together. So four fifths times two sevenths, which is eight over 35. Okay, so it basically means there's an eight over 35 chance of him every day um, doing neither of these things. But we have 365 days. So if we multiply this by 365, we get 83.4 days. So therefore, is more than 50, is he correct? I would say yes. And B says he should have 104 days. That's wrong. A is right, because you can see we have the, the, the figure that we worked out, okay? So once again, not necessarily too hard of a question, I don't think. It's just about focusing in on the right material. And so here it was the fact that he neither receives nor sends, so you have to use the opposite value, okay? I hope that makes sense. So um, I hope this video was helpful. If you guys do have any other questions, please do let me know, and please do keep putting um, your questions in the document that you'd like to see so I know exactly what will be most helpful, and I will do my best to record some mocks for you guys um, in the days upcoming. Okay, um, I'll see you guys in the next video.